Al Shalemti. Gentlemen, precious ladies and learning students. Tenastalin, Hotep, greetings. Yours truly, Dr. Yates, the inventor of grass Maddox, is saying to you all, thanks for getting the grass Maddox DVD or for watching this televised program, but most of all, for those folks who go on youtube.com and you've typed in this, the word grassmatics in the search engine or search box and you're watching this program. Thank you very much for writing to me or commenting on what you're seeing on YouTube or on the DVD grassmatics. Today in grassmatics, we are going to be learning geometry. Geometry. And in everything I do, I like to point out perception versus conception. Because a lot of things that talk to us is based on concepts. A European, Greek, mythical way of thinking. It's based on concepts. Most things that are taught to me, whether it be math, English, languages, whether it be religion, economics, and all social things that are taught to me about Americans and about the Europeans is based on Greek mysticism and most of the times are Roman concepts and uh, that's why I call it conceptional which can be titled conventional thinking which has to do with European ideology of how they conceive things. Here perceptionally most people that teach things perceptionally are those who have not not a thing not a thing or not one thing a means one not one thing to do with the European way of thinking. We're talking about indigenous people that have no relationship or no outside influence of European way of math or religion, etc., etc. And they apply perceptional thinking instead of conceptual thinking. People like the Nubians, uh, they're known for building the pyramids. People like the Dogons. Uh, we're talking about Mali, which one of the first universities. We're talking about people of Australia known as the Aborigines, the Aboriginals. Abba meaning creator, original people. Abba originals, known as Aborigines. Their mathematical system, and have nothing to do with the European before the British went there, uh, was based on perceptional thinking, including the Native Americans. The natives, indigenous people like the Cheyenne, the Mohegan, we're talking about Apache, we're talking about the Yakama and different indigenous tribes of uh, the continent known as United States. Those indigenous people of math and we have living and thinking have nothing to do with the European is based on perceptional thinking. We're talking about the Mayans, we're talking about indigenous people. Even as far as the Chinese and the Hindus have nothing, and the Islamic people have nothing to do with the European influence. Most of them, their teachings and learning is based on perceptional thinking. That being said, grassmatics is based on four principles. Perception, reasoning, rhythm, and restoration. So you learn that here, today, in this program as we explore the basic geometry. First of all, linguistics is very important because Dr. Yates says that when math is being taught, it is best being taught as a perceptional quan qua. Perceptional what? Quan qua. Quanqua is a better word than language. Trust you me on this one. Quanqua. So it should be taught as a perceptional quanqua. And once you learn it as a perceptional quanqua, then you wouldn't be questioning the equation or doubting or guesstimating or estimating. No, because math should be taught in accurate science. And for it to be taught as accurate science, obviously it should be taught in a quanqua that is perceptional and not conceptional. For example, I was taught by the British, then by the Americans, to define zero as nothing. But in grassmatics, the quanqua in which we teach this math is called grass-ish. Instead of English, it is grass-ish. And in that quanqua, we teach that zero should never, 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 never be defined as nothing. And here are some of the reasons why. Because there's no such thing as nothing, because there's always something. There are always things. We live in a world of things, not of nothing. 
And also, I've never experienced nothing. So I have no idea what the Europeans are talking about when they use the conceptual expression or ideology about nothing. Zero. I can make a zero with pen and paper. Here it is. It's also the shape of a circle. Zero has many meanings, so it's not nothing. It's something that can be identified as a quantity or a symbol, or it can be made as in inscriptional writing. So, zero in grass mathematics, we say, is the starting number of all numbers, whether it be plus or dis plus. They call minus. We don't say minus. You learn that in advanced grass mathematics, why it is called this plus instead of minus. So we're dealing with plus and this plus. So zero is the nucleus, the center numbers, which is the starting number for numbers that are going one, two, three, or numbers that are going minus. Okay? So it's right there, and so it's a starting point. That's what zero is, the starting number of all numbers. So zero means several things. Zero is the shape of the planet Earth, of the sun, of the moon, all the planets as we can own in our an outer solar system, they all shape like zero. There's not a planet that shapes like a line. They all are circumference or oval. So, that being said, we are going to learn that the word geometry means the word geo is another ancient word for Earth, the planet. And matri come from the word as in to measure. So we're talking about the measurement of objects upon the earth. That's what geometry should be defined as. So let's do that here today. First of all, the question I have is, how many degrees there is in a line? I was told in school you will have 180, but they call it 180. We don't say that in grass mathematics. We, we express the figures. One, eight, zero degrees. A line is comprised of that because it's a straight line. But the question I have for you is, what is the proof that a line would be of the sum or equivalent to one, eight, zero degrees? What would be the proof? On what grounds? On what measurement would that be? Now, why is it not one, six, zero or one, nine, zero or one, two, five. Why is it one, eight, zero degrees? Well, according to yours truly, Dr. Yates, saying grass mathematics, I'd like to point out to you that without the numerical symbol, which is a circle identified as zero, without that, you cannot tell how many degrees in a line. That is the base of the measurement to tell that a line would be comprised of one, eight, zero degrees. Follow me. I'm also establishing it, or re-establishing should be the word. I'm re-establishing, because I've established it already, that zero is a number. Zero, not just a number. It is a starting number of all numbers, not just a number. Zero is the number, meaning out of the bosom or the womb of zero, all numbers, fractions, decimals, all numbers, they flow out of the bosom or the womb of zero. Zero is the mother of all numbers. That's what I teach in this program. It has nothing to do with nothing. So, here is zero. It has also been said that zero is comprised of three, six, zero degrees. Get something here that writes that so that we can express that. Of three, six, zero degrees. Three, six, zero degrees. It has been said that zero or circle, sorry, circle is comprised of three, six, zero degrees, which is the symbol of the zero. That is the reason why you shouldn't say it's nothing. It's the comp completion of, of all the degrees there is, as in a circle. Now, that being said, that it's 360 degrees, the question again is, what is the proof that it is 360 degrees? Were you told that in school, why it is 360 degrees? Well, if you weren't, I'll be more than happy. It is my pleasure. You hear your need Esther now. It is my pleasure. Shame with you that 360 degrees is what a circle is comprised of. 